And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord drew upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. He shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie. The shepherds came to see the baby Stood by his mother's side Here laid the Savior inside a manger Oh, what a glorious night Oh, what a glorious night I hear the angels singing Hallelujah, let the earth receive her King. I know the love has come. Sing it out. Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds wondered, they couldn't hide it, told everyone inside. All were amazed when they heard how God came down on this glorious night. God came down on this glorious night. I hear the angels singing. Hallelujah, let the earth receive her King. I know the love has come. Sing it out. Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born. Yeah. singing hallelujah let the earth receive her king i know the love has come so sing it out jesus christ is born i hear the angels singing hallelujah let the earth receive her king i know the love has come Sing it out, Jesus Christ is born. I heard that Jesus Christ is born. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Get the band back together. Get the symphony. Get the children's choir. Get the high school marching band. We're gonna play a new song. All of us. Everyone. This will be God's song. It's part of Him, and it's been given to us. And we will sing it from the tallest buildings. It will be the greatest song of all. We will sing it when we are low. We will sing it when we are on a mountain. It is a song of the universe. From its beginning to the present moment. Now, this moment. And it will go on forever because God goes on forever. This is God's song. God the creator. God the good. God the just. God who brushes his opposers off like dust from his shoulders. God the mighty and God the merciful. People will sing this song. People will dance to this song. No critics allowed. They will be stopped dead in their tracks. Their words will be turned against them because today, today, they will sing. Today the baby is born. Today the angels break forth. Today darkness cowers in the corner. Today wrongs are righted, prophecies are fulfilled, wounds are healed, the hungry stomachs are filled. Today we all get up. Today Jesus comes to earth. Yes, Jesus, the Messiah. And this is the song we sing. This song will heal the world. This song is the song of our Savior. He is born. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is born.
forgive me. Uh, at this time, we've got a special uh, time for our kids that are here tonight. So if you are sixth grade or under, we'd like to invite you to come up on the stage with us. So sixth grade and under, you guys come on up and find a seat. We're just going to pop you right down here on the stage. And my wife, Heather, is going to come join me. And we've got something special for you guys here tonight, okay? So, how many of you guys have we got here tonight? Good number. Well, we're so glad that you're here this evening, and uh, we've got uh, something special for you so you can follow along with the service tonight, Uh, so you guys take that back, and Mom and Dad can help you there, Uh, but I'm going to read to you for just a minute here, okay? I want to read a story for you. Luke chapter 2 and verse number 1. The Bible says this, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, fear not, For behold, I will bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And I'm going to let my wife read Matthew chapter 2 to you guys. So that one didn't work. I have a tendency to break things. Try that one. Let's read Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through, oh, where do you guys think we should stop? Maybe about, oh, verse number 11. Okay. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where the Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they... Had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense. I want to know something. How many of you guys have got some gifts under the tree at home? You guys have got some Christmas presents under the tree. Awesome. All right. Have you guys get to open up some presents tonight? They might get to open up presents tonight. Oh, you're the lucky ones. All right. So the rest of you have to wait till tomorrow morning? That's all right. It's just as fun tomorrow morning as it is tonight. All right. So I'm so glad you guys came tonight. That's for you to follow along with tonight. On the front, there's a place where you can take some notes if you want to, or if you just want to do some of the coloring and things like that, that's for you as well. But I hope you guys have an awesome Christmas. Have a Merry Christmas, and uh, I appreciate you guys so much for being here tonight and being a part of our church. We love you so much, and I just wanted to spend some time with you tonight before we got too much deeper into the service, okay? All right, well, you guys go ahead and uh, head back to your seats there. Thank you so much. 
And uh, at this time, we, we'd like to ask you to stand with us as we sing together. We're going to sing a song together here this evening. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a child is born. a child is born a son is given a son is given for unto us a child is born a son is given a son is given the Messiah oh to see him to see him high and lifted Son is given. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, a son is given, the Messiah. Oh, to see him, to see him high and lifted up, shining in the light of like to welcome everyone here this evening. It's great to see everyone, old and new faces here at Midway Baptist. We're sure glad to have you. Um, uh, uh, just please bow your heads as we do an opening prayer. Dear Lord, we're just so thankful for each one here that's uh, here with us this evening just to worship what the true meaning of this season really is all about, of celebrating the birth of your son, Jesus Christ. I know so many of us and myself included, just don't deserve all the honor and glory and uh, all the blessings that you provide us, Lord, but uh, we're so thankful for those each day and and uh, each day that uh, you just bring us just health and family, Lord, and we just celebrate that here tonight and, and uh, we just give you all the honor and praise that you deserve. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Just We have a short video coming up here for our upcoming uh, January vision.
Well, as we get the ensemble back up here, we're going to be talking for the next several weeks, starting next Sunday, about that concept of trust fail, and we're just going to watch video after video of that for 35 minutes, okay? So you guys come on out. We'll have a good time. No, I'm just kidding. We'll, we'll have some time in the Word and uh, talking about this idea of trusting the Lord uh, for 2018. So I'd like to have you stand with us again as we sing another song about the Lord and about His birth, God with us. are we that you would be mindful of us what do you see that's worth looking our way we are free in ways that we never should singing you can be seated there and uh, we've got one uh, special and then we'll get into the word here for just a few moments
Thank you, Tara, for sharing that with us. And thank you for all those who've been a part of our uh, music time tonight. Excuse me. And uh, appreciate the Klingner boys being up here tonight. Did an awesome job singing that song, didn't they? And I appreciate our ensemble and all those who are a part of our music ministry. Um, We are a singing church, and uh, we're proud of that and thankful that we have something to sing about at Christmas time. In just a few minutes, we're going to sing again some Christmas carols, some some familiar uh, Christmas carols. I love that uh, part of our uh, candlelight service when we just focus on the Lord for just a few moments. We block out everything. We block out the lights, and uh, we just sing by candlelight together. And I'm looking forward to that uh, time together here in just a few moments. But I want to share with you something uh, from the Word of God here uh, before we go any further in the service. I think it's important for us to look into the Scripture, to look into the Bible, and see what God has for us tonight. Luke chapter 2 and verse number 6, the Bible says, and so it was that while they were there uh, in Bethlehem, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. There's a uh, an old story about a man <clears throat> who was a very hard-working gentleman. He worked as hard as he could just to get bread on the table for his family. And many of you guys uh, are living that. You know what that's like just to, to live hand-to-mouth, to try to fight, to scrape for your family, to make sure they're provided for, to make sure they have a good Christmas. Uh, many of you have worked very hard at that this year, and uh, this man could sympathize. But this particular man, just a few days before Christmas, he became very angry because he discovered that his youngest daughter, just a, a, a very young three, four-year-old daughter, had used up their, the family's roll of expensive gold wrapping paper, the gold foil wrapping paper. And so since money was tight, he became even more upset when on Christmas Eve he saw underneath the Christmas tree this gold-wrapped shoebox that she brought to him, and when he opened it up, it was completely empty. Nothing inside of this expensively wrapped box that he had worked so hard to pay for. And he, be, he just began, became very flustered and very frustrated. And he looked at her and he said, Young lady, don't you understand that when you, ha- when you wrap a gift, you should put a present inside of it? And the little girl began to cry. And tears began to stream down her face. And he, his heart uh, was broken for her. And <clears throat> she looked at her daddy And she said, but daddy, I did fill it. I filled it with kisses that I blew into the box until it was all full up of love. And the father's heart was shattered at this point. And he hugged her and he uh, told her it was okay. And this year I won't do that, you know, but I'm just kidding. That wasn't me. Don't tell anybody that I did that. But uh, in a very real sense, Each one of us in this room tonight has been given a very expensively and lavishly wrapped gift that to many people seems empty, that to many people seems pointless and useless. There's nothing contained within that box. But when you open it up and you look not just at the physical side of it, but when you look at the spiritual side of that gift, you realize that that gift contains all of heaven's love. All of God's affection is wrapped in this one little gift. And that gift was placed in a manger in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. Notice what we read at the end of the story here as we're finishing up this dramatic story of Mary's uh, virgin birth, this miraculous birth of Jesus Christ. Notice uh, what it tells us here at the end of verse number 7, this one little footnote. We wouldn't even think about it. We wouldn't even uh, ponder where Jesus was born if it weren't explicitly told to us in the passage. It says here in verse number 7 that he was placed in what? A manger. An animal's feeding trough. He was placed there because there was no room for them in the inn. Why did they make no room for Jesus? Because he didn't come wrapped the way they were expecting him to come wrapped. He didn't have the trappings that they were expecting. You see, when the Messiah was to come, everybody was expecting him to come as a conquering hero born into a prestigious dynasty of kings. But when Jesus came, he came wrapped in something completely different. He came encased in a completely different package than anybody was expecting, especially that innkeeper. But it's somehow fitting 
that the birth of God's son was preceded by somebody saying, I don't have space for you. It's very fitting that that's the case because for the past 2,000 years, people have been looking at the gift of Jesus Christ and been saying, I just don't have space for you. I just don't have room for you in my life. I just don't have the time for you. I just don't have the, 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 the love for you. I, I just don't have any concern whatsoever about you. I just don't have time or space for Jesus right now. Maybe later. Maybe when life gets a little easier. Maybe when I settle down a little bit and, and have some kids. I'm married and things like that. Maybe I'll focus more on that. I don't have space for him right now. But can I tell you this? You're missing out on the most blessed Christmas gift you could ever receive. Whatever it is that's keeping you from trusting Jesus Christ, I would beg you to make room for him. I would beg you to find place in your life to receive the gift of Jesus Christ. Whatever you have to remove from your life to say yes to Jesus, begin removing it. Stop saying yes to other objects. Stop saying yes to other things that you think are more beautifully wrapped, that you think are more important, that you think are more crucial because they're wrapped a certain way. And set those aside. Stop saying yes to those objects and start saying yes to the greatest gift that God has ever given to mankind. It's the difference between heaven and hell. It's the difference between joy and and a life of impatience. It's the difference between a a life of peace and a life of fear when you trust Jesus Christ. It doesn't come wrapped the way you thought it would come wrapped. The gift isn't what you thought it would be, but it is the most blessed gift you'll ever get. There's an old Christmas tradition. Uh, Some of you might even practice this. There's an old Christmas tradition of setting an extra place at the Christmas table at Christmas dinner time. Anybody ever heard of that or maybe you've participated in that? Uh, It's it's kind of an old English tradition, I think, that's kind of carried over uh, across the Atlantic here. And the way it works is that a small meal will be plated and placed at an empty chair. And no one is allowed to touch it. No one is allowed to eat off of it. And it stays there for the duration of the meal until everyone else is done. And the point of it is this. Just in case a stranger may come knocking at the door, we have a place for him. Just in case there's somebody we weren't expecting, we have a place already set for them. And it is a sign of generosity. It is a display of hospitality, of readiness to receive the unexpected in whatever package they come in, in whatever trappings they come in. And Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20 gives us a Bible picture of that. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. This is Jesus Christ speaking. He says, I'm standing at the door of your life and I'm knocking. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Can I ask you this? As you're preparing your Christmas, tonight's Christmas Eve, and I'm so thankful that you chose to make this candlelight service a part of your Christmas Eve routine this year. But as you're preparing for Christmas and you're doing the final trapping, some of you have great traditions of going and looking at Christmas lights. Some of you guys will wake up super early tomorrow morning and somebody will sit down and and read the Christmas story to the family. There's all kinds of awesome traditions that are out there. But can I ask you this? Would you set a place at the table of your life in your home for Jesus Christ this year? Would you place a little bit of extra room in your life for Jesus? Now, I'm not talking about literally at your Christmas dinner table. You can if you would like. That would be a great tradition to start. But I'm speaking spiritually. Would you make room for Jesus Christ today? There was no room for him in the inn, and there was no room for him in Herod's palace. There was no room for him in anywhere but a stable. Can I ask you this? Would you just give your life to Jesus Christ this year? Would you give your heart to Jesus Christ this year? If you haven't done it before, it's time this Christmas to make space past the presents and traditions, and it's time to welcome the real light of Christmas, the real star of Christmas, Jesus Christ. If you do know Jesus Christ, once again, would you open the door And welcome him into your Christmas. Welcome him into your life 
once again and, and make room for him once again in your life. It is his holiday after all. Have you noticed that many times we have Christmas and we go through all of our traditions, we go through all of our routines, and they're good things, and by the end of the day we haven't given one thought to God. We haven't given one thought to Jesus Christ. And it's his holiday, it's his birthday that we're celebrating. We're giving gifts because it's his birthday, not mine, not yours. Would you make space for Jesus this year? Would you give room to Jesus Christ in your family, and most importantly, in your heart? Would you open yourself to Jesus Christ this year? Can we pray together? Let's bow our heads and our hearts. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for everyone that has chosen to be a part of uh, our candlelight service this year. Lord, I pray that you'd bless them for it. Lord, I pray for those who desire to be here but cannot be for one reason or another. And uh, God, I just pray that you'd pour out your blessings upon them as well. Lord, I think about our, uh, our time here this evening. I pray that if there's someone here this evening that has never trusted Jesus Christ, I pray that they make the, that decision tonight. Lord, it's time to stop putting it off. It's time to, start, to stop hiding. It's time to get real and recognize whether or not there's really been a moment of conversion, a moment of change, of giving themselves to Jesus Christ in Him only. Lord, I pray that you'd speak to their heart right now and give them no peace until they find peace in Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for the family here tonight that's been struggling and fighting to be patient with Christmas. There's so much to do. We've placed so much trappings around Christmas. And Lord, it's fun sometimes, and sometimes it's just not fun. Lord, I pray that you would help us to remember what it's really all about. That it's about you. It's about your son. And Lord Jesus, if all we had this Christmas was you, it'd be enough. It'd be a blessed and a happy Christmas. It would be truly a merry Christmas if all we had was you. And Lord, we thank you for everything else that you've poured into our lives, everything that you've given to us. Lord, I pray that you'd bless us now for just a few moments as we spend some time in prayer in Jesus' name. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, I just want to ask you a question tonight. Is there anyone here this evening that would say, Pastor, God spoke to my heart while you were talking. God spoke to my heart about my need for Jesus Christ in my life. And I would like to trust Jesus Christ this evening. I'd like to give my heart to Jesus Christ. If that's you th this evening, would you just slip your hand up there? We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to call you down. We just want to pray for you. Anybody like that? We'd love to help you tonight with that. Anybody? Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. I know I'm on my way to heaven. But the fact is, is something missing in my life. And I know one reason for that is that I haven't given myself to Christ on a daily basis. Sure, I gave my heart to Christ. I gave my soul to Christ the day I got saved. But I've taken it back time and time and time again. In this Christmas... I want to give myself as a gift to Jesus. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Whatever he wants, whatever he says, I want to serve him and I want to know him better than I ever have before. If that's your testimony, would you just slip your hand up there? Just hold it up there so I can see it. I'll pray for you. Anybody like that tonight? Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, allowing God to speak to your heart. I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond to what God might be doing in your heart up to this point. Uh, I've asked my wife to come and sing a song for us here this evening about the birth of Jesus Christ. And if God has spoken to your heart, I'd invite you to come down front. I'll be right here down front, seated on the front row. Come get my attention. I'll, I'll talk with you. We can pray together about anything going on in your life. We can meet together. Maybe you need to trust Jesus Christ. We'd love to talk with you about that tonight. Maybe you've been saved, but you've never been baptized. Let's talk about that. Let's get the process started there. Or maybe God's doing something different in your life. You just want somebody to pray for you. I'd be glad to be there for you. But as Heather sings this song, if God has spoken to your heart, would you come?
at this time that we're going to transition to our candlelight portion of the service and so I'm going to ask uh, those men that are going to help me here this evening if you'll come find your post up here uh, they will get you a candle and uh, we should have enough for one for everybody here in the auditorium tonight and if you need to take a child to the bathroom or something like that this would be a great opportunity for you to do that because we're going to have our ensemble come and sing and prepare our hearts for this candlelight portion Um, and so if you would uh, come join me up here ensemble and then as these uh, men make ready here uh, just hop up there with your family come forward and uh, get your candle for for you and for everybody else everybody should like I said everybody should have enough for one and uh, so uh, as we sing uh, come on forward and uh, get your candles here for the candlelight portion Your 
name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nations sing it louder. Nothing has the power to save but your name. tower your name is a shelter like no other your name let the nation sing it louder for nothing has a power to save but your name God with us guys so much and th today is a little bit of a different uh, service uh, our candlelight service because of the snow this morning we had to cancel our morning service and so we're actually going to we've moved a couple things into our evening service that we normally do in the morning uh, we had a couple specials tonight that we wanted to make sure that we heard those and that we shared those with you and so we moved those to this evening and also we need to move our offering to this evening and so I'm going to ask those men that help with the candles you guys come back up here and help me with this offering uh, We'll uh, take up our offering. This is for our church family, our regular attenders, folks like that. If you're a guest with us here tonight, we would not ask you to give in this offering unless you felt compelled to do so. We would ask you to fill out that Connect card that's in front of you there in the, the back of your chair. Uh, that in front of you, just grab that Connect card there, fill that out in lieu of a monetary offering, and then when the service is over, you'll come bring that to me. I have a special gift for you. And actually, Jeremy, I need to give you a gift. I've got something. I keep forgetting to give you one, buddy. So uh, don't let me forget that tonight. I've been, God's been all over me about that this week. But uh, we, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we treat our guest as a, a part of the family. So we've got a gift for you here this evening. Uh, but our regular folks here, we're going to give tonight. So let's pray together and we'll ask God's blessings as we give these funds here tonight. And uh, Brother Chris Altizer, could you lead us in prayer, sir? The absence of light, the loss of direction, no frame of reference, the presence of fear and uncertainty, void, and then a light. It starts as a flicker. It's not glaring for all to see, but it's a light nonetheless. Beautiful and mysterious, helping us to see, guiding us, warming us, comforting us. It is growing. It is shining brighter now. In one timeless moment, something of heaven is birthed through the tears of a teenage girl and the cry of a newborn baby king. All of heaven is perched at the edge of the sky. 
watching, waiting. God is sending the light of heaven into the dark of this world, to the young, to the old, to the weak, to the strong, to the lost, to the found. He is coming to us. He is walking with us. He is dying for us. He is living in us. Our unthinkable darkness is being shattered by unbearable light. And we gather to see, to view with fresh eyes again, the light that all the darkness in the world cannot ever extinguish. Jesus is the light of the world. You might have noticed down here on the front table that there is one candle that remains unlit. And the reason for that is very significant because in this time of our candlelight portion, we want to remember all of those that we have lost that we will not see this Christmas, that we will not have a place for at our Christmas table this year, that we won't be able to share presents with. And we grieve with you. We hurt with you. And so... Red and green and silver and gold don't really match the feeling and the emotions of your heart this Christmas. And so we light the blue candle in remembrance of all those that we love and that we have lost this year and in years past. And uh, we thank God for the time that we've had with them and we would never want to forget the memory memories that we cherish of them. And so as we begin our candlelight portion, uh, we want to honor those and remember those uh, that mean so much to us that we have lost. Uh, but let's sing a few songs together. If you'd like to, you could stand there with me, and we're going to sing a few old traditional Christmas carols. Let's start with O Little Town of Bethlehem. Still we see thee lie Above thy deep and dreamless sleep The silent stars go by Yet in the dark street shineth The everlasting light The hopes and fears of all that last verse. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad time Carol, away in a manger. No crib for a bit. Let's sing it to you.
down his sweet head the stars in the sky look down where he lay the little lord jesus asleep on the Silent Night. This will be our last song this evening, and uh, then we will dismiss. Let's sing this uh, beautiful song, Silent Night, Holy Night.
just want to tell you before we dismiss tonight, make sure to uh, read over the bulletin, uh, especially since we weren't able to go through it this morning. Read over that uh, sometime this week. Uh, some things coming up, uh, men's basketball, things like that. We've also got uh, Vision Night coming up Sunday, January 14th at 6 p.m. We'll have a sign-up sheet for that, and we'll begin reaching out to you this week uh, about Vision Night. So we hope to see you out for that. And I do just want to let you know we have a Christmas selfie wall. Right outside here on my right, um, on your way out, stop by there and take a picture with some friends and families. Have a good time tonight uh, if you have a moment before you leave here this evening. But if you put it on Facebook, make sure to tag Midway Baptist Church. We want to see it too. We want to see the picture. So uh, put that out there for us if you would. And uh, we hope you guys have an awesome Christmas. Enjoy each other. Enjoy your families uh, with one another. And uh, we're going to pray and dismiss here. So if we could stand together, uh, we'll ask God's blessing uh, as we dismiss here tonight. And uh, those of you that are guests with us here this evening, you don't normally come to Midway. We hope you'll come back and see us again for a a regularly scheduled service. And uh, we hope that you'll uh, drop that Connect card with me on the way out. I've got a gift for you. Love to spend some time talking with you this evening, getting to know you better. Uh, But let's pray together, and we'll ask God to dismiss us with his blessing. Brother Marty Brundage, would you please pray for us, sir? Yes.